Hi, it's Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. So uh, anyways, uh, picking up where we left off, uh, we're going to do our next video. And so this video um, is going to be, I want to put some link back up there. Um, it's going to be the one that I intended previously, which is, you know, replace the DC motor with a three-phase permanent magnet synchronous motor, one that's going to employ field-oriented control, okay? And um, so anyways, I believe that we've accommodated with the, the ability to do this with the interface that we now have. Torque comes in, as well as the system information and what needs to come out is the information about that motor, okay? So let's go in here. All right, and let's get that other model up there. Uh, let's see. Okay. And, uh, and so anyways, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take that scope too. All right, and I'm going to copy it. All right, let's just paste it in. Okay, hit the space bar, and uh, I'll bring this up. What kind of you? Well, let's let's just wait till I get stuff in, in place. All right. So the basic idea, though, is that this is looking for torque. That's going to come from here, and that this controller is not really going to be used. So let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, and we're not going to be delivering voltage. Okay, and um, you know. Since I just deleted the controller, I certainly want to make sure that you know that it's still there. All right. And so there's your controller. It's called FOC for Field Oriented Control. And if you look closely, you'll essentially see this classic form. And I probably should clean this one up a little bit so it looks as clean and nice as, as, as it does in the top level of this model. But here's our controller. It's generating signals that will essentially deliver the voltages to my motor. Now, the motor here is provided by the tool set called Simscape. And Simscape is rich with all kinds of physical domain modeling tools, which includes electric uh, circuit simulations, hydraulic and pneumatic circuit sim simulations, and rigid body dynamics for kind of the mechanical systems. And we'll definitely devote some time to how valuable that, that piece of this is, too. But, but anyways, for right now, we're using a block that ships with the tool. It's a permanent permanent magnet synchronous machine. It has three terminals. We label A, B, C. And if you look close, you'll kind of see something different for Simulink. It's lines without arrows. And so these essentially represent the ideal uh, conduction paths that we use all the time in electric circuit descriptions. All right. So um, anyways, let's, let's kind of come back up. Right. And so the premise here is, again, we're going to replace this with this. Well, you know, in one of our earlier videos, you saw we were very intentional in choosing this DC motor to have the right, I'll say, uh, power capability. And that kind of came down to the torque it can provide and the speed at which it can operate. And, um, and so anyways, we need to be kind of attentive to the same thing here. Right. Now, this is, I think, really kind of a cool thing. Right. And this is kind of let's call it the community of, of electric motor folks are really good about this. Right. And so notice what I got for the AC motor. I'm going to put these two right next to each other. Right. Because there's such a, a wonderful adoption of language that takes place. And so essential, essentially our DC nominal voltage is pretty close to the same thing as voltage rating. So I'm going to go with that. But notice stall torque, no load speed shows up in both. And then we'll do assignments for inductance. And uh, something that uh, takes place with AC motors is this idea of pole pairs. And so, um, wow, look, I misspelled it. I don't know why I'd throw an E in there. See that? Okay, any, anyways, but let's, uh, let's make these motors essentially equivalent. And so it's going to mostly be through the stall torque and the no load speed. All right. And it's probably a good idea to have inductance. It kind of scales to the job itself. Um, again, they're... You know, these last two would ultimately be um, identified through your motor selection, through some sort of motor um, catalog, and would be provided information by, by the supplier of that motor. But I, I would say that more often than not, um, AC mo motors that I work with have four pole pairs. So I'm going to make that selection too. And I think that looks pretty good.
Okay, and so now I'm pretty ready to to make the exchange. All right, and so I'm gonna hold my shift key down and I'll be able to pull that out like that. Now this one works, so I'm not going to delete it quite yet. <laughs> I always think it's a good idea to have a, a way back if you need to. All right, and now I can kind of hook up into these previous signals. All right, now notice my um, AC motor. Well, actually, let's get that torque in. Uh, wants feedback on both theta, that's the angle, and W, the angular velocity. And I think I told you in an earlier video, I might really want that angle at some point. So I'm going to put it into my measurement bus, which I did. Okay. And uh, I'm even going to change the order. I want angle on the top. Okay. And so very quickly, I can kind of hook into this. All right. And so think I got it. All right. And now I'm going to just kind of measure the right things. So we're going to measure current, velocity, um, current right here, voltage right here. And um, this one's a position control. And so we'll measure angle as opposed to angular velocity. And um, Again, I, th I think this is kind of cool. Same motor works equally well for each. And for that matter, field-oriented control works equally well for each. And that's because it's all about a torque command. All right. So anyways, let's go ahead and hit run. I think this will work. It worked in my, in my rehearsal. This one's a little bit of a complicated demo. So definitely dealing with a little bit of a stress level to make sure that, that we get what we want. But it, it, it's looking like I, I got it correct. I'm going to continue to kind of rescale the scope so we can kind of see the activity as, as signals expand and go to higher values and that sort of thing. Um, you know, one of the things I, I love about this is, first of all, it, you know, when we look at voltage and current, it doesn't look like either model, okay? Uh, but certainly it wouldn't, you know, in comparison to a DC motor because a DC motor is a simple single voltage, single scalar, I'll call it scalar voltage, and it's a simple scalar current. Here we're now getting three phases, so A, B, and C. I think it's, yeah, well, against your choice on what you're going to call A, B, and C, so I won't get into that. I'll call it esoteric conversation. Um, but I, I also like that it doesn't look like the motor control one. Uh, which is the pure PMSM doing velocity control. And what I featured was once it gets to a, a constant velocity, that you basically si see sine waves for A, B, and C. They're a little bit out of phase, but they have that constant magnitude. Well, that's the case for a constant velocity. Okay. And as you can see, we start from zero and there is no voltage or current. And we finish at zero velocity because, again, this is angle. You know, and D angle DT, if it's flat, that will be zero. And we'll see that, that both voltage and current will finish at zero, or both start and finish at zero, right? And so um, it's running a little bit slower. I don't know if you noticed this, but the auto uh, solver selection with Simulink uh, switched it from what we call an explicit solution with the OD45, and it's now using this kind of what we call a stiff solver, OD23TB. All right, but we're almost there. All right, I can even tell you why it's slowing down. See those like sharp discontinuities? That's always difficult numerically, and that's why you like stiff solvers. All right, but uh, anyways, that's what our currents will look like. And I always like to go back up here and look at this scope. And again, it's beautiful. And so what um, we've commanded is exactly what our system is responding with, and hence, you know, the blue curve and the yellow curve are indistinguishable. They're identical. So anyways, um, that is um, a really cool thing that we can kind of operate at this level where we can make something as, you know, um, I'd say architecturally substantially different with regard to PMSM as compared to a DC motor and that the whole system can work and we can operate at what I'll call a higher level of requirements, which is mostly about torque and speed requirements, which were things that we began talking about almost immediately as we started off the series. Okay, anyways, thank you.